please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good afternoon, you're with us here on a fresh new edition of Midcap Radar. The market's up 46 odd points, which, which means we are off almost about 40, 45 points from the day's high. Uh, the market on the Nifty got to about 10,000. Uh, uh, let me get this for you. The high was about 10,241, uh, and we are about 10,200. Uh, as things stand. So there is a 40 odd point give back which has already happened. The low was 10,146. So from the lows as well, you know, we are up about 50, 55 odd points or so. So somewhere in the middle uh, is where we are uh, trading. It's not for nothing like what we had two days in a row now, which is yesterday and day before yesterday. Complete washouts. It's a little better for bulls uh, this afternoon. With me is my colleague Samira. Samira, afternoon. Hi, Prashant. Uh, good afternoon to you as well. And uh, quickly, we'll also take stock of what's happening in the European market. I think it's quite a tepid start actually over there. Uh, so just shredding water, there's an ECB meet uh, that's due to take place. So I think uh, uh, that's something that investors there uh, will be closely monitoring. So that, of course, remains the key to watch. But for now, let's get started with this show and invite uh, Ashwini Gujral for a quick tech check on the market. Hi, Ashwini. Good afternoon to you. How are things shaping up uh, uh, in the market and what's uh, the call for now? See, last couple of days have been extreme narrow range days. Now, yesterday we tested uh, the 200 day moving average. Today we retested it. So somewhere there's a sense that uh, the 200 day moving average is holding on and we are possibly building uh, some sort of a base for a extended pullback rally. So from here with a 50 point type of stop, it's worth, uh, you know, buying the Nifty and hoping that uh, we get uh, 100, 150 points on the upside. Similarly, on the bank Nifty, uh, given that uh, the market is not showing a further propensity to fall, uh, I think uh, short covering could happen in the next couple of hours. So that appears to be the call. And uh, individual stocks, you tend to buy those where you suspect uh, shorts could be hiding. So Bank of Baroda is a buy with a stop of 130, target of 142. Axis Bank is a buy with a stop of 512, target of 530. And Matheson is a buy with a stop of 310, target of 325. You should expect uh, substantial rallies in ICICI and State Bank also, because they also got hammered, but those were calls in an earlier show. Ashwini, I mean, essentially, have we got hit some level of which you're expecting this bounce, or is just extremely oversold markets bouncing? See, the 200-day moving average got tested yesterday. We didn't believe that test. But when it got tested again today, and again it's bounced back 40, 50 points, now that means that there is some serious support out there. Not that it can't be broken, but after an extended downtrend, when you hit a strong level where the market starts to uh, trade in narrow ranges, often that is a precursor to a substantial move on the other side. So the signs are there. Now follow through needs to come in uh, for us to uh, conclude that indeed that is happening. But the odds are high that uh, from here, if you take the long trade, it will work out. All right, Ashwini, thanks very much uh, for joining in with your uh, trading ideas. With that, let's get in some fundamental opinion as well. Uh, we caught up with Madhav Dhar, managing partner at GTI Capital Group earlier this morning, and he thinks it will be difficult for the market to actually repeat last year's performance and uh, the correction may actually get a little worse. What strikes me uh, the most is how much talk and angst and worry there has been around a correction that is barely 7 or 8 percent after a huge year last year and a big year la the year before that. So it just tells you, uh, you know, how much new money has come into the market, how complacent that money is, how perhaps unseasoned that money is, and that worries me. I think this will be a, a correction and an ongoing bull market. My concern is simply that the correction is, is not either big enough or deep enough or long enough for it to really shake people up. And corrections end when people are sort of really shaken up. It changes their convictions. You could have a much more meaningful correction that is perhaps, you know, 12 to 20 percent of which we are barely halfway through. So my own gut instinct is it gets worse. I think it is really time that India started thinking like a true modern 
functioning economy and stop thinking about you know this model and our model and india is unique and we have this you know combination of uh, gentle social socialism and all that stuff this is a big deal i don't think this is one off i think this is systemic and i think it adds to the risk premium of doing business in india and it's very bad uh, that's madhav dhar with his views there i mean the market from when we started uh, is up another 10 points or so uh, so that's 10211 Uh, is uh, where we find the index at. I mean, if you can quickly put the PSU bank, the Nifty PSU bank index up. Uh, you're with us here on Midcap Radar. I mean, uh, before we took the break, we were uh, looking up. I mean, we were up 60. We're back to being up only 50 points. That's how we started at 130. Let's speak with the company now. Amit Sheth is co-chairman and managing director at Orin Pro Solutions. He's joining us on the phone line right now. The stock was up 4%. Okay, it's up about 5% right now. Mr. Sheth, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, you know, just to begin uh, by uh, saying that this year so far has been actually great for IT companies. I mean, if I look at stock performance, etc., it seems that uh, y- uh, your company's stock has kind of lagged behind. Uh, just, 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 just a comment. But I'd like to know what's happening as far as business is concerned. We understand that uh, the final demerger of some of the services businesses is underway. Can we begin there? Yeah. So. Uh, uh thank you for uh, having me and uh, you know over last couple of years we have focused around uh, restructuring and simplifying the business and we are in the last leg of it uh over last uh, one year we have uh, or last two years we have uh, sold some of our businesses and the last transaction uh, uh, you know uh, con- that we did with KPMG uh, concluded uh, most of it and uh, we also have got shareholders approval to demerge uh, our services business so uh, the the remainder uh, you know within orion pro would uh, focus clearly around uh, uh, you know products in uh, security right digital and uh, banking space and uh, we'll yeah. also focus on the uh, government business Oh. Uh, Mr. Sheet, uh, uh, just a moment, sir. We'll come back to you in just a bit. Uh, some news flow coming through. Uh, we understand from sources that the uh, uh, proposal of the Relcom asset sale uh, to Rel Geo that has been cleared by the CCI. Uh, this, of course, uh, includes uh, uh, the Relcom Towers, India Fibre, Spectrum Holdings, as well as the telecom infrastructure. And the total payout, uh, therefore. to relcom will be at uh, 18000 crore rupees as well we understand that this entire asset sale would be closed uh, by the end of the month um, kritika saxena who's uh, bringing us this news now joins us on the telephone line kritika hi sarara so essentially we didn't know the valuations till now so that's very important we understand that 18000 crore rupees is the total payout that is coming from the geo deals uh, to our com uh, cci has cleared it is going to be up on the website very soon our sources have told us that uh, uh the proposal the entire uh, sale has been cleared and this includes our com tower assets uh, the india fiber business the spectrum holding uh, the telecom infrastructure Okay, uh, we'll uh, try and reconnect uh, with Kritika. I think we've lost the line there. So basically, the operative part of this entire thing being that the uh, total payout to Relcom would be about eighteen uh, thousand odd crore rupees. I think we have the management of uh, Orion Pro still with us, uh, Mr. Shet. If you're still with us, uh, we understand now that uh, uh, you know, post this demerger of the services business, that you would become entirely a pure IP-based uh, products company. What's the outlook uh, then post the demerger? in terms of your top line growth etc uh, so i i think we are seeing uh, you know reasonable uh, growth and momentum in the business and uh, we are focused in the right areas so you know security and digital uh, these are areas where uh, you know uh, there is a lot of investment we are seeing plus uh, orient pro will also have uh, government business where uh, you know we are seeing a lot of new opportunities Uh, especially in the areas where we are in so smart city and smart transportation are the areas where we are focusing uh, so we definitely uh, see you know uh, reasonable uh, momentum uh, and obviously you know growth in uh, margins so over next uh, one one or two years could you be more specific mr shet i mean uh, you know if it looks at looks at the last couple of years of growth it's been actually uh, quite subpar I mean, revenue growth. Say, for example, last four five years, it's been around five or six percent CAGR. Uh, right. 
what could what could it be? Could it improve? So, I mean, how, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you will have to uh, look at the growth uh, from uh, the perspective of restructuring as well, because uh, we have uh, sold out a lot of our uh, you know services business over last uh, two to three years, and uh, despite giving away uh, that kind of revenue, we've been able to uh, grow. So. If we net off the core business has been growing at about 20, 25 percent, and uh, we, uh, you know, we see that uh, momentum uh, getting well into next couple of years. Okay, so uh, but no numbers. You know, uh, Mr. Shet, we at uh, here at CNBC have been uh, actually tracking the progress on smart cities. Uh, we right. understand that smart cities and uh, city metros are about 15, 20 percent of your revenues. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us uh, what is, especially the smart city program, from you, yeah. from a vendor perspective, uh, how are you seeing this uh, developing? I mean, what could be the scope and uh, size? And more importantly, uh, at what pace is this progressing? Uh, because as far as we could understand, looking at some four or five cities where this was being done, some of the smaller work is being done. But the big ticket items, which requires large investment, that has not yet uh, begun at all. So I, I guess, uh, you know, uh, this is a mixed initiative of uh, both central and state governments. And uh, what importantly we are seeing is that uh, government is, uh, you know, uh, every state is working towards uh, ease of doing business uh, and bringing in transparency. So, uh, you know, over last one to two years, uh, the deal momentum has uh, clearly started picking up. And uh, the contract sizes are also, uh, at least in the space where we are in, uh, looking uh, better. So, you know, uh, metros, you know, almost uh, a lot of these metro projects are coming uh, quickly. And uh, there is investment that's happening around city surveillances and, uh, you know, uh, digital services. So we are seeing uh, a reasonable growth and uh, we believe there is opportunity for everyone in this space. Uh, the mid cap index now down over 60 odd points. Uh, the market, though, still managing to gain. I mean, the Sensex just about 150 points right now, but clearly off the highs. IDBI Bank is a stock in focus now down about 7%. It's uh, sitting at the low point of trade. Remember, uh, since the start of the year, the stock was up, what, 25 odd percent bulk of it recently. But look at the way through the session, the stock has been heading lower. But let's get in some national news. Uh, farmers continue their long march from Nashik to Mumbai to seek complete loan waivers. The farmers are demanding uh, this complete loan waiver and uh, they began the 180 kilometer long march last evening from the CBS Chalk in central Nashik, took a night halt and they've resumed their journey today on the Mumbai-Agra National Highway. They plan to, uh, in their words, get out the Maharashtra Vidhan Sabha after reaching Mumbai on the 12th of March for a resolution to their issues. <coughs> okay, uh, so you know uh, we're going to wrap up this session with some sobering news. Uh, we are selling off and selling off sharply. Put look at the Nifty. Uh, we are down up thirty, only thirty-eight points. We started with a fifty-odd point uh, gain half an hour back. It's pretty volatile. We will uh, wrap up this session of mid cap radar. Thanks very much uh, for watching. We leave you with a glimpse of the women behind the scenes who make uh, this show, the mid cap radar, a success. <laughs>